the big three phases is what I'm going to be covering in this lesson. So what I'm referring to in the big three phases is what I alluded to in the previous lesson about if we narrow it down, I really think it's best if athletes are just rotating through strength, strength power, and power predominantly. There may be cases where you want to go off and do an endurance phase or a power endurance phase or even need to do unloading for a few weeks. That's fine. But 90% of dryland programming should be spent inside one of these three phases. Just keep it simple, keep it effective. Strength, strength power, power. Remember in the previous lesson, you can download this PDF to go into more detail on the load, reps, volume parameters to make sure you're staying within those phases. I want to talk about these a little bit more and how you should program based on the type of athletes that you have. Now, if we were to break these down further into between the three phases, the strength phase should be what most often athletes are in. Strength power second most, and then power least often. So what that looks like, let's say we are programming um, just for eight weeks or so, and we'll actually get to an even more detailed one in a second, but just in general, strength phases, you're gonna last four to six weeks strength power two to four weeks and power one to two weeks. Now again, you could go off one direction or another and there's reasons for that. But in general, think about it in kind of that pyramid as well. That strength is our base, right? Then strength power and then power in terms of the phases and how we're gonna rotate through it. So don't get, definitely don't do the inverse unless you have a really extreme athlete and case. But what I wouldn't do is flip this where you're rarely in strength most often in, in strength power than most often in power. Don't, don't flip that. But what is going to depend on how you do the phases is what's the athlete's experience. And so if we have a new athlete, brand new, they haven't done much of any dryland training. And what I would think of that as a structured dryland training. So especially when we have teams or individuals that come to us to do our surge strength programs that we do deliver online with our dryland certified coaches, if they've been, you know, exercising, that doesn't really count. I want a structured program because that means the body's used to adaptation, stimulus, change, actually going through those phases. So that's really what I care about in terms of are they experienced or not. So you could have a swimmer very decorated in terms of uh, what meets they're at, what they've won, their times, but they still could be very new to dry land. And the inverse as well, you could have a very new swimmer, but let's say they've been weightlifting or doing lots of actual structured strength training for years now, they would end up being a more experienced athlete. So don't confuse it with what their swimming level is. It's really what have they been doing on land when it comes to weights and resistance training and actual structured programs. So the newer athlete, they need less phase rotation and they need much more strength phase. Whereas the more experienced athlete, you could do much more phase rotation, and we'll show you the difference soon and what that looks like. And you can end up being more balanced on the phases, or even going to a little bit of the extremes there. So if we were to break this down into an eight-week beginner program, I would usually go four weeks of strength, then three weeks of strength power, and then only one week of power, and then back around. And the reason for this is, if their strength level isn't very good, then why am I trying to work power? Because they don't have that much strength to begin with, and power by definition is how fast can we use that strength? So that's why I push it more to trying to stay in the strength phase as much as possible, and even the strength power. And yeah, they're getting a little bit of power out of the strength power as well. So if you look at it, in that eight weeks, they're still getting four weeks of at least some power. So it's not like I'm all you know seven weeks of strength and only one week of power but I would more rely on the strength power phase than just the power phase, especially for a beginner. The other thing too is most exercises that you would use in a power phase are just a little bit more complex by nature or they're more demanding on the body in terms of the muscles having to absorb those forces from plyometric or explosive exercises. So all of these factors make sense that strength should be the predominant phase that a beginner should go through and then tapering down as they work through the power phase. Whereas a much more experienced swimmer, I might break it down in terms of only two weeks at strength, then two weeks at strength power, two weeks at power, and then even cycle back to strength power again for two weeks. 
So that'd be a much more experienced athlete that I knew had a, a good strength base. And if we're trying to push a little bit more towards power and strength power for whatever reason, whether it be their particular event or what we need them to continue to improve it. So you can see that's a really big difference from the beginner. You can see it's very linear, steady, big chunks versus the experienced one. Man, every two weeks we're changing. And sometimes I've had athletes where even every session in a week we change through these phases as well. So the more experienced, the more often I'm changing the phases, the less experienced, the less often I'm changing them. And for this new athletes, it really comes down to a competency factor as well. I don't wanna change so often that they're not able to get used to the exercises. And really from that, they're learning how to focus, how to have intensity. And I feel like strength is a skill and that's sometimes forgotten about, that the athlete needs to learn, okay, if I'm clutching that bar for a bench press or pulling myself up for a pull-up or doing a push-up, thinking about the rigidity and the strength that goes through their whole body and not just the extremity or their arm. That takes focus, that takes just time. And so I would rather the athlete work on things like that because that's a skill. And if we remember the brain talking to the motor units, they can increase strength that way. So I'd much rather have the athletes focus on that in terms of learning all these new exercises and jumping from phase to phase. Whereas the experienced athlete, you're gonna need to do that because they're well past the point of diminishing returns where we could just do a steady step type program. They're beyond that. And so we need to change it a lot more often, whether that's every session or every week or every few weeks. And so you need to be changing the stimulus much more often with experienced athletes. And that's the time where you can really be much more specific. For athletes that were trying to make the Olympic team and go to Olympic trials and have the, the swim of their life, we were extremely specific in how we were programming for them versus the 11 and 12 year olds who are just trying to get a little stronger, do a few pull-ups. That's a whole different in terms of we're looking at much more general and focusing on strength and them learning the skill of strength as well. So that's how I would break down the big three phases. Remember rotating through them and it really depends on how experienced the athletes are in terms of how often I'm rotating through. That does it for this lesson.